Ooh, that looks tasty. Friends, colleagues, honoured guests, buffoons, prisoners, guards, and yes, you too, Fred. Unfortunately, Arthur was no longer with us. And today we have to determine who will rule Camelot. I would like to say that all of you can suck on my toe because I will be ruling this realm. Welcome folks, Today the Hunger Gamer is back with another Kickstarter preview. And today we are talking about Riot at the Round Table. And before I begin, please make sure you turn on your Klingon subtitles in case I make any mistakes. That's where you'll find the corrections. And just a note that what you see before you is a prototype and is subject to change. So right at the round table is a take that kind of trick-taking style game. And I'm kind of vague on describing it purposely because, well, it does some things a little bit differently. You're going to watch this and you're going to say, oh, that's kind of like hearts or spades, but then not really. So that's where I'm going to leave it. And if you are not interested in how this game is played and just want to know my final thoughts, then you want to jump ahead to the timestamp on the screen right now. For those of us still here, let's go through very quickly how this game works. You'll see I have three decks of cards out right now. That's representing three different players. Then we have the active defender token right here. And this is the trump suit die. You have your rest of your cards here. You have your discard pile. You have your clover cards, your cannon cards, and then your crown and scepter cards. In order to win the game, you have to be the first person to get three crowns. I will tell you that two scepters equals a crown, Two clovers equals a scepter, and two cannons equals a clover. And I'll also say that you do start the game with two cannon cards each, but I'm not going to get into that at the moment. So what is going to happen is you're going to decide who is the defender. I'll just put it right here, and then you will roll the die that tells us what the trump suit is. In this case, it is yellow or diamonds. And then what is going to happen, I'll slide this out of the way, is... Each, the player immediately to the left is going to be the attacking player. And they are going to get a chance to attack the defender here. And to do that, they have to place out one or more cards in front of the defender like so. Now, I put down a two. If I had more twos, I could add more twos onto that. I don't, but what I do have are two more jokers. So I'll put two jesters, not jokers. Out. So now, that is the attack that I have made. Now, once the attacker has concluded, all the other players, other than the defender, can add on to that attack. And in order to add on to the attack, they have to add the same number as one of the numbers that's out there, or a jester. In this case, you will see, I do not have any of those cards, so that player can't do anything. Then, it is time for the defender to defend themselves, and they have a choice. They can either pass the attack to the player immediately to their left, which is done by if I had another two, I could put a two down and that would pass the attack and then I get no bonuses, no nothing, I've just passed the buck to somebody else. And, or I can try to defend, and to defend you have to play a card that is higher than what is out there. And keep in mind these jesters are twos right now. So this is a fairly easy defense. I could put down a guard here, and I could put down a squire here, and then I could put down a lord right here. And now I'm currently defending. However, now the other players have the option to add on to this attack. You can have a max of six cards out there. And now the other players can add anything on that matches any of the symbols out there. So, if another player has a two, a guard, a squire, or a lord, they can add that on to the attack. And as it turns out, though, I don't have any of that. So, that means I have successfully defended the attack. By successfully defending, I then would take a cannon card, and you'll see there's three different types of cannon cards, and then I would pass the active defender off to the left, and then I would be the active attacker. And then you go around like so. I will also say that 
just before you pass the Defender token, you are able to play any cannon or clover cards that you have. There's the Wizard, which changes the Trump suit. And I should say that if I had had a yellow card, this would trump anything that's out there. So I could have played the yellow one, and because that's the Trump suit, that would have defended against that. So the Wizard defends against the Trump suit, stuck in the stocks, allows you to make a player skip their attack, and then there's the Guardian Angel, which protects you against a any cannon card that gets played on you. And then there are also three different types of Clover card, but I'm not going to go into exactly what it is that those do at this time. Then all of the cards that were played get discarded, and then everybody draws back up to six cards. I will also say, though, that had I been unable to defend here, and let's say we ended up like this, and I just could not defend against that last one, then all of these cards I would take into my hand rather than having them be discarded. As everyone draws up to back up to six cards, it is possible that you come across this symbol here. If you come across this, that simply means you re-roll the trump suit die. In this case, I wound up with the exact same thing. And you play around and around and around like that until eventually this deck will run out. When this deck has run out, the first player to go out, meaning all of their cards have been played and discarded, will get a crown. And then the last player that goes out gets a clover. And then the other players wind up with a scepter. And that's it. That's the gist of how this game works. So what do I like about this game? I have to say I like that this game feels fairly familiar. It feels a little bit like hearts and spades. So it's not hard to pick up. It's not hard to learn. But I also like the twist on it. I like the strategy that's there. I like how you're kind of selecting what you want to attack with, what cards do you want to stick out there at any given time. And then you also have the added strategy of, do I want to defend against this? Because maybe you don't. Maybe you have a hand of hot garbage, and then by bringing those in, you're going to set yourself up later on for a much bigger hit. It's a fun little bit of strategy. I also like these various cards here. I like the abilities that they have, and I like how you have to make a choice of, do I want to use the ability? Do I want to play it out in front of me? Or do I just want to hold on to it to try to turn it into a clover card? Same thing with the clover cards. Do I want to use two clovers to get myself a scepter? Or do I want to play these abilities because the abilities are actually pretty darn good? And maybe that'll help you get to the crowns first, or maybe you've just wasted your time by not just spending those to get a scepter, which will actively get you closer to getting a crown. I think it's a fun, delightful little bit of decision making that you have to make. And I also really kind of enjoy this idea of how every turn you are piling on to one player and that one player is trying to beat everybody off as best they can, which on the surface could sound like a lot of hurt feelings could be had, but it doesn't last. It doesn't last because the very next turn, you are passing that on to somebody else, and now it's their turn to take the beat down and try to survive. So it just moves and it goes quick, 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 and you go around and around. And so I like all of that. And the final thing I'll say is I really enjoy the art on these cards. I love these little, I don't know, smiley face dudes or whatever you want to call them. I think they're fun. They look really good. But more importantly, I like that each of these suits here has different fun little art for each one for each suit. So we have our little our face cards, but you'll see that each one as you go through has a different fun little look to them. And I really, I just really enjoy them. I think these cards, all in all, look fantastic. It's a very good looking game. Now, what are my quibbles about the game? And I really have just one pretty big quibble with the game, and that is as the game is written right now, it does not work well with two players. This game really will shine, I think, at four, five players. And I also need to note right now that I have only gotten to play this game at two players because of Shelter in Place. And I am just looking at my knowledge of games and reading the rules and imagining how things do work out that I do think this game will play quite well 
at a higher player count. It's one that I'm very excited to actually try with the group of four personally. But right now, if it's going to list two players as an option, it needs a two player variant. Because one of the things that happens, and I didn't discuss it in the rules description, is when you defeat somebody, they forfeit their next attack. And so if you're playing at two players, that means you can beat somebody in an attack, but they have to forfeit their next attack. So that means the crown just stays with them. So that means you have to attack them again and you just attack them over and over and over, and maybe you keep beating them down, that's good for you, but you don't actually get anything for it because you only gain the cannon cards when you successfully defend. And so by beating someone, you're actually hurting yourself. And so I think if they can come up with a two-player variant, maybe changing the rules of the penalty for losing an attack, maybe putting more cards in the hand so it's a little more interesting, and I don't know, then I think it, it will kind of take off a little bit more. And then my truly minor quibble is I wish there was more than just three of each of these cards, both Cannon and Clover. I like them all, but I do wonder if it won't get a little bit stale just playing the same ones over and over and over. But that's it, folks. That is right at the round table. This is a really, I think, a fun, take that, trick-taking game that's just filled with laughs. So there you have it, folks. That is right at the round table. I think this is a very good option if you like games like Hearts and Spades, but you just wish they were a little more board gamey. Love the art. I think this game has a lot of potential, especially if they can work out how the two-player variant works. So there you have it, folks. If you're familiar with this game and I made any mistakes, please let me know in the comments with a timestamp. I'll get that into the Klingon subtitles. If you found this video useful, please like, subscribe, and share. As always, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.